Let's now describe some key parameters of an antenna starting with radiation pattern. Most of the definitions provided here are from IEEE standard definitions of terms for antennas. An antenna radiation pattern or antenna pattern is defined as a mathematical function or a geographical representation of the radiation properties of an antenna as a function of space coordinates. Radiation properties include power density, radiation intensity, field strength, directivity, and polarization. A convenient set of coordinates is shown here, which demonstrates both the Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates. In the polar coordinates, the distance from the origin is shown by variable r, the azimuth angle measured from x-axis is shown by phi, and the elevation angle measured from z-axis is shown by theta. An antenna is assumed to be at the origin, and the radiation pattern is shown along z-axis. Various parts of a radiation pattern are referred to as lobes. A radiation lobe is defined as a portion of the radiation pattern bounded by regions of relatively weak radiation intensity. Figure A demonstrates a symmetrical three-dimensional polar pattern with a number of radiation lobes, and figure B demonstrates the linear plot of the radiation intensity, also called power pattern of the antenna. As shown in the figure, radiation lobes are subclassified into major or main lobe, minor or side lobes, and back lobe. Major lobe, or also known as main lobe, is defined as the radiation lobe containing the direction of maximum radiation, which in this case is along z-axis or equivalently theta equals zero. Similarly, minor lobe, also called side lobe, is a radiation lobe in any direction other than the intended lobe, which this definition includes the back lobe as well. Some key parameters of an antenna are defined based on the radiation pattern. For example, gain, which is the maximum power gain of the main lobe. Side lobe level, or SLL in short, which is the highest power of side lobes relative to the maximum power. Half power beam width, which is the angular width of the main lobe from where it drops to the half power. And first null beam width, which is the angular width from the first nulls. Null is where the power gain is zero or very small, which happens between lobes. Now, before defining the antenna gain, we need to introduce some other key parameters. The first is antenna field regions. The space surrounding an antenna is usually subdivided into three regions. Reactive near field, radiating near field, and far field. These regions are so designated to identify the field structure in each of the regions. The boundaries separating these regions are not unique, although various criteria have been established and are commonly used to identify the regions. They are usually defined based on the parameter d, which is the largest dimension of the antenna, and wavelength, which depends on the operating frequency. The parameters that we define here for an antenna, including radiation pattern, directivity, and gain, are called far-field parameters, since they describe the behavior of an antenna in far-field region. Now, we need to introduce radiation density or power density for an antenna, which is simply the measure of the power per unit area radiated by an antenna in a given direction. We show it by W and it is measured in watts per square meter. The other important parameter is radiation intensity, which is a measure of the radiated power per unit solid angle. It is shown by U, which is equal to power density W times R squared and measured in watts per unit solid angle. R here is the distance from the antenna to the point where the power density is being measured. To understand the unit solid angle, think of a sphere with radius R and consider a circle on the surface of the sphere where the area of that circle is R squared. That corresponds to a unit solid angle. Now let's define an isotropic antenna, which is an ideal antenna that radiates electromagnetic energy uniformly in all directions. To, make, to measure radiation intensity of an isotropic antenna, shown by UO, we need its power density. Since the power is radiated uniformly in all directions, the power density in radius r or in distance r is radiated power 
divided by the area of a sphere with radius r. We then multiply this by r squared to find the radiation intensity, which becomes radiated power over 4 pi. The next key parameter of an antenna is directivity, which is defined as the ratio of the radiation intensity in a given direction from the antenna to the radiation intensity averaged over all directions. Or in other words, it is the radiation intensity of the antenna relative to the radiation intensity if the same power was radiated isotropically. By substituting UO, directivity becomes 4 pi times U over radiated power. There is another important parameter, gamma, used in analysis of many components, including antennas, which is voltage reflection coefficient at the input terminals of that component, or in this case, antenna. It is measured as Z in minus Z O over Z in plus Z O, where Z in is the input impedance of the antenna, and Z O is characteristic impedance of the transmission line that connects the source of the power to the antenna. It determines how much of the power is delivered to the antenna through the transmission line and how much of that is reflected. To determine that systematically, an important parameter is defined called voltage standing wave ratio or VSW or in short. The ideal value for that is 1 when there is a perfect impedance matching that sets gamma to 0. Now, from the total forward power sent to antenna, some part of that may be reflected due to impedance mismatch, and the rest is delivered to the antenna as input power shown by P in. From this input power, some part of that may be wasted in terms of conduction loss or dielectric loss, which depends on the material of the antenna, and the rest of that is radiated. To show this, an efficiency parameter eta is defined as P radiated over P in. It is called radiation efficiency and always less than or equal to 1. Now, with these parameters, we can define antenna gain. It is defined as the ratio of the radiation intensity in a given direction to the radiation intensity that would be obtained if the input power, the total input power, were radiated isotropically. To measure that in a given direction, theta and phi, we divide radiation intensity in that direction by radiation intensity if input power P in was radiated isotropically, which is U in the direction of theta and phi divided by P in over 4 pi. We can connect this definition to the directivity by using the radiation efficiency eta and finally gain is eta times directivity. An example is shown here. Consider a dipole antenna with its radiation pattern shown in red. The maximum gain of the dipole pattern relative to the isotropic pattern is 2.14 dpi, which is called the maximum gain of this antenna. Usually, the maximum value of gain is reported for antennas, which is eta times maximum directivity. 